Hey everyone, we're back at it again. We're doing weighted averages time for P4. Um, here are the learning objectives. Um, and so we're gonna talk a little bit about mean and average first. Um, once we understand how to calculate just a regular average, we'll understand how to calculate a weighted average. So here's a little introduction here. Here's my question to you. Um, say William has taken four test grades, a, seven, a 70, 80, 90, and an 80. What is the mean? In other words, what's his average? If you wanted to calculate, if this was the end of the semester and he wanted to calculate what his average was on his uh, exams, because he needs to figure out, you know, what grade he got on his exam average, um, how would he do that? Well, there's a couple different ways to do it. I like answering these kind of questions with pictures. Um, so here is picture number one. One way to do this is um, you can graph these all. Um, you can see here, let me see if I can write this really quick. Um, you can see that the first exam is here at a 70, the second one is here at an 80, and then a 90, and then another one at 80. And so the one way that you can do this without having to do any weird calculations and stuff like that is that you can draw something like this, and your goal is um, the average is when you can get all of these um, pillars to be the same height. Once you can get them all to be the same even height, that even height is your average. So you can see us doing here, let me clear this. You can see us doing here in the next picture. Um, I, I know you can see the picture on the right, but I'm gonna show you how I did it step by step. So um, this one up here is the um, is higher than all the other ones, right? So the average is not gonna be on top of this. So I'm gonna take this little space and I see that this is between 80 and 90. So this is a value of 10. This is 10 high. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it down here because test three has like too much and test one has not enough. Um, and so I'm gonna put this here and it has a height of 10. Well, I see this is 70. So if I put 10 more, it'll bring it up to 80 like that. And so that's kind of what this picture is doing is I'm taking this part right here and I'm putting it in there. But you have to make sure that the numbers are correct. So this gives it an extra 10. Uh, now you can see that all of them have an average of 80. All of them have a height of 80. This one doesn't count, remember, because we put it, we put it right here. Um, and so 80 would be the, uh, the average, it would be the mean. And that's how, that's one picture way of how you can calculate it. Um, here's a different way that you can calculate it. Um, so I've taken the same exams and I've made them each a square, right? So there's uh, one square here for the 70, two for the 80, and one for the 90. Um, and since we're imagining that the exams all are weighted the same, they're all maybe like 10% of your grade or something, um, or William's grade. Um, and so what we can imagine is we can imagine that these are on a seesaw and where you find the average where you find the mean is where you put what is called the pivot it's the balancing point on the seesaw it's that middle triangle part um, in order to get it to be balanced so you can see here that if I put the little triangle here up on 80 um, that would make the seesaw balanced we're assuming that all of these squares have the same uh, weight um, However, with weighted average, and we'll see later, uh, you'll see in class during um, when you're calculating things like GPA or you know different exams with their different um, weights and stuff, um, that the boxes might not be weighted the same. They might be different weight boxes or different size boxes, right? Um, but right now, we're just assuming that they're all the same. And so yeah, since uh, 80 has a little triangle there, it has a little pivot, 80 is the average. So now let's talk about weighted average. So here's a question. Um, you have uh, a score of 160 in the previous 10 bowling games. Uh, you just bowled a 162 on the 11th game. What score do you need to bowl on the 12th game to get an average of 161? Okay, um, here is how I don't think you should do this problem. This problem, notice that it's in the weighted average. It's not the same as the other averages. But this is how I see people um, do this often. So I want you to avoid this mistake is they'll say, okay, let me just, let me do this uh, seesaw thing here. Uh, okay, one of them is 160. Um, I wanna get 161 and I got 162 on the other one. Okay, so I got 160 and then, oh yeah, I got 162 on the other one. Oh, I know, the average has to be here. So I have to get, I have to get this box here on the 12th game and then it'll be even, yay. That's not how you do this problem. That's not at all how you do this problem. Why, what is the problem? Um, there should be 10 boxes in the 160 section. You bowled 10 games of 160, so really, it's like, it's like this. 
one, two, three, four, five, like that. Really, you have 10 here. So you can definitely see that that's not balanced anymore, right? Um, so that's not, we're going to avoid doing that. That's not how you do that. So how do you do that? Um, I have a third picture, um, kind of like a graph layout that I like. Um, I like doing it this way. You can do it with the seesaw. You can do it with the other scales and stuff. That it's totally going to work. That's totally fine. But when they give me, see how they're asking me, what score do I have to bowl in the 12th game to get an average? They're giving me the average and they're asking me what I need to score on that last one. Kind of like a, oh, if you want your exam average to be an 80, what do you need to score on your next exam to get that average? Those kind of questions, I like doing it with this other picture. Um, and so the picture goes like this. First, I'm going to start off by writing all of the games out. If this is exams, I'd write like test one, two, three, four, five, right? Um, notice the different colors. I used uh, one color here for 10 because these are all the, they all come from the 100, average of 160. Um, I know what I scored on the 11th one. I don't know what I scored on the 12th one, right? Um, and so I just color coordinate for my sake and for your sake, but you don't need to color coordinate it. So anyway, so now I need to write down, I have all the games, I need to write down um, what score I got on all of the games. Now I know on the 11th one I got 162 because it says so right there. Um, and then I definitely don't know what I got on the 12th one, like I'm trying to figure that one out, right? But do we know what we got on the first 10, um, 10 games? The answer is no, we don't know. The only thing we know is that it averaged 160, but they... Every single one of them could have been a different number and none of them could have been 160, right? Uh, it's just the average. However, for the sake of this problem, uh, we can just assume that they're all 160 because the average is going to come out to be the same anyway. It doesn't matter. So we go ahead and we're going to write 160 down on, underneath all of these, uh, right? Even though it's not 100% right, it's, it's good enough for the problem that we're doing. It's good enough for, for this kind of, uh, for our situation here. So we're going to put 160 for the first 10 games. The 11th game got 162. Now we're trying to figure out the 12th one. And I want the average, the total average, to come out to be 161. So the way that I'm going to do this is um, I am now going to look at each of these numbers underneath here, and I want to see how far away they are from the number 161. Okay? Um, and I need to do a plus or a minus. For example, this first one, this 160 is one away from 161, but it's one less. So I need to put a negative one. I missed the mark by one. I'm one too little from the average, right? And I'm going to go ahead and do this with all of them. I'm one too little. Here on 162, I'm one off, but I'm one too many, right? So this gets a positive one. I went over by one. And these I went under by one. So I'm going to do that with all of these. And here are my scores. Again, I can't do that for 12 because I don't know what 12 is. I don't know what I scored for 12. I'm trying to figure that out. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up all these numbers. Uh, there's 10 negative ones and one positive one, so it's a negative 9. Um, and so what needs to happen is for the 12, I need this number, this negative 9, I need it to end up being 0. If it's 0, that means I got to 161. So for the 12th game, I'm going to need to, in order for this to be 0, I need this 12 to be a positive 9 here um, to cancel out with this negative 9. Um, Right, to get the average of 161. So in order to do that, I need to take my average of 161, add 9 to it, and get 170. So this guy has to be 170. So you can see here, if it's 170, that means I've been over by 9, and this negative 9, and this positive 9 will cancel, will give me 0. And that means I've made it exactly to the average that I wanted. And so I, I, this isn't really like a picture, like we're not drawing boxes or anything like that, but I think it's a nice like um, visually laid out way to do this like I'm taking the information I'm laying it out and I'm I'm not doing a lot of math really um and again this is I like doing it this way um when I've been given an average that I want to get to when I want to score this average um uh versus the other pictures where where I needed to calculate the average I, I was given all the information